السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Okay, so for um, today's Quran inspiration is going to be a bit different than how we used to do it. Alhamdulillah, we've gone through a lot of the short surahs, and after doing it for about a year and a half, uh, I think I'm going to take it into a little different direction. It's more going to be focused on topics, but now on the topics, obviously, it's going to be given in the perspective of hey, these are these a couple ayat in the Quran that discuss a certain topic. We'll go over the ayat, the literal translation of those ayat, and how they apply to our lives. I think that inshallah will give, especially since given the short time of like 15, 20 minutes, I can focus on two, three, four ayat, whatever they may be. Today is a lot more like 10 ayat, but they all kind of really give the same idea. But focus on a certain topic, giving all the ayat necessary that kind of talk about that certain subject, inshallah. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Surah Al Mu'minun from Ayah 99 to Ayah 108. And this surah, uh, this, these ayat specifically talk about a story, a situation that's going to happen in the Day of Judgment. And inshallah, this will be one, hope, act as a wake up call for all of us, and two, a reminder for us to you know, always think about death and of our actions and how we go and engage in our life, inshallah. So I'm going to read over the, uh, read the, surah, the ayat first, and the translation of the ayat and how we think about it. So, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب رجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت كلا كلا إنها كلمة هو قائلها ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون فإذا نفخ في الصور فلا أنساب بينهم يومئذ ولا يتساءلون فمن ثقلت موازينه فأولئك هم المفلحون ومن خفت موازينه فأولئك الذين خسروا أنفسهم في جهنم خالدون تلفح وجوههم النار وهم فيها كالحون ألم تكن آيات تتلى عليكم فكنتم بها تكذبون قالوا ربنا غلبت علينا شقوتنا وكنا قوما ضالين ربنا أخرجنا منها فإن عدنا فإنا ظالمون قال اخسأوا فيها ولا تكلمون so the translation of these ayat go as follows and just think of I want you when I'm reading these uh, translation of these ayat think of you yourself in this situation and that will be 10 times more impactful and just think about it as a simple story a simple something that had no possible connection to our life just think about it as if you were in this situation when death approaches any of them they cry my lord let me go back so I may do good in what I left behind. And Allah responds, never. It is only a useless appeal they make. And there is a barrier behind them until the day they are resurrected. Then, when the trumpet will be blown, there will be no kinship between them on that day. Nor will they even care to ask about one another. As for those whose scale is heavy with good deeds, it is they who will be successful. But those whose scale is light, they will have doomed themselves, staying in hell forever. The fire will burn their faces, leaving them deformed. And it will be said, were my revelations not recited to you, but you used to deny them? And they will cry, our Lord, our ill fate took hold of us, so we became a misguided people. Our Lord, take us out of this fire. Then if we ever return to denial, we are truly be wrongdoers. And Allah will respond, be despised in there. Do not ever plead with me again. These ayats right here are talking about the Day of Judgment, our purpose in life, the reason why we try so hard to live according to what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa ordains for us. And He tells us, 
about a people that did not take their life, did not take their life seriously for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They took it for granted. They saw the ayat, they saw the signs, they heard all of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them, did you not hear the signs? No, they did hear them. And what? They chose, they chose to ignore it. They chose, as they said, oh, that's not actually going to happen. And what? They will plead on the Day of Judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's response will be simple, clear, and fierce. What? Is that? Be despised in there and do not what? Not just do not talk to me anymore. No, do not ever emphasis. Do not ever plead with me again. The first two ayat that I recited, it says, when death approaches any of them, they cry, my Lord, let me go back. So I may do good in what I left behind. Never, it is only a useless appeal they make. And there is a barrier behind them until, they, until the day are, they are resurrected. Here it's giving us you a situation. Everyone here, one thing that's guaranteed for us, whether we like it or not, is death. You were born and we're gonna die. Death is guaranteed to us. So this event that Allah is talking about right now, when death approaches any of them, this also applies to us. This is not a reality that we can escape from. So Allah SWT is telling us, listen, when death approaches any of them, and you are one of them, and then they cry, my Lord, let me go back. They're saying, let me go back. And they're saying, what? So I may do good in what I left behind. Because they start regretting. They start saying, oh, it actually happened. The day of judgment actually happened. The day of judgment happened. I didn't do enough. I should have taken more time and more effort. And I should have done all the time that I, that I have focusing on other things that should have been for your sake. Just so I'm confident on the dead last day of, on the day of judgment. So I can be confident. The appealing, let me go back, let me go back, let me go back. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, never, it is a useless appeal. We gave you one and one chance only. And there what is a barrier between them and them going back until they are resurrected for when they're chosen for the uh, day judgment and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts to judge everyone, right? And the next ayat, they say, then when the trumpet will be blown, there will be no kinship between them on that day nor will they even care to ask about one another. As for those whose scale is heavy with good deeds, it is they who will be successful, but those whose scale is light, they will have doomed themselves staying in hell forever. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid it out very nicely what is the final decision. What's the decision making? What is his method of deciding whether you're gonna be entering into Jahannam or Jahannam, right? What's the, what's the apparatus, what's the method he's gonna use? Is your scale of good deeds and bad deeds. Your scale of good deeds and bad deeds. Very simple. If you have more good deeds, you'll enter Jannah. If you have more bad deeds, you'll enter Jahannam. Allah SWT didn't tell us, oh, you're, uh, you're going to have to wait and see until they just need to figure out what my method of deciding Jannah and Jahannam for you will be. No. We all know Allah SWT is merciful and He will help us and if we make dua, He will help us and forgive us for our sins and make and then inshallah increase our hasanat. But He didn't just leave us blindly, not knowing what to do here in this life. No, He said, hey, make sure you focus and obey my commands so you can what? Increase that scale of good deeds. And guess what? Allah SWT also adds in there, when the trumpet is blown, what? There will be no kinship between them on that day. Your friends that you always surround yourself with. They'll not be with there on you that day. He won't care at all about you that day. And they will, they even, they will, they not, nor will they even care to ask about one another. Your parents that took care of you when you're young. Your mother when you were sick, when you were sick and when you were sick throughout the night, she would stay awake taking care of you. The amount of love and compassion she had, that will not even appear at all whatsoever in the Day of Judgment. Because everyone is scared for their own life. Everyone's scared that I do what I had to do in my life, in the one chance that I had. The people that you most care about will not care about you, nor will you care about them. And then continuing on, the Ayah 104, the fire will burn their faces, leaving them deformed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing Jahannam, and like many other ayahs in the Quran, and a hadith that also describe what Jahannam is. And there's many, many descriptions. 
painting descriptions. And you can, I really urge everyone to read it because it kind of sets the fear. It says like, hey, it's a reality check for you today. If I keep acting this certain way, which I don't obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is what's waiting for me. And then continuing on, it says, it will be said, so some people will say, were my revelations not recited to you, but you used to deny them. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying what? Everyone, inshallah, everyone will receive a revelation. Or will receive the revelation in the ayat. Here means the ayat, the signs, a prophet, a message to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will receive, will, everyone will receive it. Was my message, my web message not revealed to you? And they will all say what? Yes, it was. What's with the response? Here? And then Allah Taala will say, "But you used to deny them. We gave you the ayat. We gave you the signs. We gave you the miracles. And some might say we don't have any miracles today. No, it's the Quran for us this, in, in this life. So we have seen the signs. And the signs around us is what what we see around us in, the, in our life, the world. And like in the many surahs that we've gone before in the Quran's revelation, talking about pondering the existence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, pondering the stars, pondering the earth, pondering the sun, the moon, how it came to be. So the signs were there. And the miracle for us is the Quran. And we have it there. So it's not like we didn't receive the message on our end. And everyone else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has ordained them a way to get the message that they need. So they will be. And it's like, use to another And it's specifically talking about people that what? Refuse to use, take advantage of their life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And begging for a second chance. And they will cry, our Lord, our ill fate took hold of us, so we became misguided people. We were confused. We didn't know better. Just, just like, come on, just, I mean, just give us a chance. We, we really didn't know better. And the next ayah continues, our Lord take us out of this fire, then if we ever return to denial, we would truly be wrongdoers. Now, imagine this. They're in the punishment. They finally face everything. They did everything that they wanted in this life, ignoring all the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they come back begging, just give us another chance. And even in the phrase themselves, what did they say? Not that just give us another chance, we will not ever repeat ever again. They say what? Then if, then if we ever return to denial, we are truly wrong to us. They're writing an if statement at the end of it. They're saying if it happens, not that it's completely distinguished from their minds, but no, they truly, there might be a doubt that they might happen. But we know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though He is the most merciful, He is also the just. He is the judge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond, be despised in there, and do not ever plead with me again. Very clear cut. And this might seem harsh, but it's not. It's actually a mercy that it's very clear for us. Imagine if the rules that we knew what Allah Taala wants us to do was wishy-washy. It was in between. There's some doubt here, some doubt there, some doubt here, some doubt there. We're not sure what's right and wrong. If the line wasn't clear, wasn't straight for us, we'd be guessing: Is this actually right? Is this actually wrong? It wouldn't be fair for us. But no, it's drawn very clear. This is the hub. This is the truth. This is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala wants us to do. And now we use this as our reference. The more we deviate, we will realize we deviated. And that's our job to go back. That's why I for forgiveness. So it's very clear. We only have one chance. And you won't have a second chance. Allah so in these ayat very clearly show the situation of individuals that were completing Allah for a second chance. So I take heed, me first and foremost, and everyone else here. That this life is really only one chance and that's why we try our best we try our hardest to do as much as we can in this life as much as we can because guess what one this life is what matters for us to get even a bigger and better inshallah blessings and reward in the day in the day of judgment but this is literally the key the key to our infinite happiness in the akhirah or it could be the gateway for you to enter the gates of Jahannam forever. And anyone here can do a simple math equation. I always bring up this example, simple math equation. But what? Let's say an average human lives 80, 90, 
years, something like that, 80. If you divide that by infinity, what is that happening to that? The answer is limit, it gets a limit that reaches zero. It's essentially zero. So this life really is so short, but at the same time, it is the key for us to enter into Jannah or Jahannam. That it's going to be the rest of our whole entire, like, forever. So it's both insignificant but significant. <laughs> and inshallah, uh, all of us can take these as lessons and reminders for us. And it's not just something that we've learned today, we feel the spiritual high. And then a couple hours later or a day or two later, we completely forget and don't contemplate on it. Inshallah, that's something that we take with us and continue taking with us and also always remind ourselves with it. That's why me, first and foremost, and everyone else, I really do urge this. Go to random ayat in the Quran as well and try to read the internet translation of it. Try to understand the tafsir of it while you're actually reading in your salah. Because literally all the ayat that we read are really reminders for us. The salah is supposed to be a reminder for us. Stay close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're reading those ayat, you understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all help us, inshallah, and grant us jannah. Jazakallah khair. Any questions or comments?